the Breakwaters podcast. Got, got my boy over here from the Long Island Nets. He got Andrew Scarpacci. How you doing? Pretty good. Always uh, feels good to be on any show. Look, love uh, always talking sports, whether it's on the air or off. Yeah, yeah. So you're the voice of uh, L- LIU, Long Island University. You want to tell everybody how you got the position? Yeah, so I started uh, – I'm interning for the LIU radio station when I was a senior in high school. And that was definitely the bridge that gave me a bump. Cause by the time I started my freshman year, I already had that friend group. I was a part of, I already had that extracurricular that I was already like a, a, a tenured member of. I didn't start college thinking what now. And then I just grew my way up from there. By the time I was a sophomore, there was only like five guys left in the department because LIU is more of a business school. They don't have a lot of uh, communications or broadcasting students. Um, I'm personally sports management, so I don't have to worry about that from the class standpoint. But when it comes to writing for the school newspaper and the radio station, there, um, we I definitely see the effects of not having as big of a communications department as, as a school like Syracuse or Fordham. But I ended up becoming sports director my junior year, and I've pretty much worked almost every broadcast we've ever done, uh, whether it's been in studio or uh, calling the game on the air. And I've done some stuff with the athletics department because they know us from the radio station. So if they ever need people for like the NEC front row televised games, they usually ask us and we're always more than happy to do them. Awesome. So, did the, so you're telling me did all sports, basketball, baseball, swimming, uh, lacrosse. First sport I ever called was soccer. Just because like I was a freshman, I was willing to take any game on at the time. And obviously like that was, they always need people to call the sports that not everybody wants to. I didn't really know anything about soccer at the time, but I kind of, not winged it, but I um every other sport that I've done that I didn't know too much about, whether it was field hockey or lacrosse, watch um a few YouTube videos before le- learning terminology and rules. Play by play is all the same. You're just saying what's happening and where where the play is at. But in terms of describing actually why things happen, if it's either a confusing play or if there's a stoppage, like you definitely have to know the sport. I've been working on that uh, working on that as I go because obviously not every sport is as easy to call if you if you didn't grow up watching it and uh either playing it or following it yeah for sure and you say you call the games the the in in-house sport games in Brooklyn so the basketball the swimming is in Brooklyn so the uh, people that you don't that don't know LIU Brooklyn LIU Pulse was the D2 school LIU Brooklyn was the D1 school made it one big one D1 school, and they call it LIU Sharks. They combined it, and they play the in-house sports in Brooklyn, out-house sports in in Long Island. So you... Yeah, it was my freshman year that they did that because I'm the only person who's assuming that they're not like a fifth-year student who remembers the LIU Post Pioneers because I was a senior in high school there last year's Division Two, Went 10-0, won the conference. I was just interning at the station that year, so I didn't really have any on-air roles. But um, I got to see – the end of that legacy and then my freshman year was when they rebranded everything to the sharks it was the brooklyn blackbirds the liu post pioneers now it's just one liu sharks team and like you said pretty much all the indoor sports play in brooklyn um some of the um indoor sports play at post depending on like where they are so like ice hockey teams play it they play they're technically uh a post team and they play at the north world health ice center which is about 20 minutes away from campus right by eisenhower park in east meadow so um, we've done those games, too, for both radio and front row. Those are always always fun to call because hockey is just a very fast-moving game. And um, you just got to be able to really read the play at fast motion. And you can't spend too much time waiting on one thing, like maybe a sport like you can with baseball. You always have to be watching every every second. Eisenhower Park, isn't that where the Islanders practice? The one by the Coliseum? You're talking about yeah, that? Yeah, so... Yeah, Northwell, where the LIU teams play, it's where the Islanders practice. So, like, you always see, like, the Islanders vans in the back of the parking lot. Uh, that's awesome. I know that. It's good, it's good to hear that. And you told me you uh, – the the games in Barclays Center a couple of times. How was it calling it in Barclays Center? I was here, a big Nets fan, got the hat on, right, I see. How was it uh, calling the game in the, your, your home uh, court over there, Barclays Center? Yeah, it was a surreal experience in there every year. Um, that was, I think that started, yeah, that started my freshman year. And then after COVID, they didn't do it again for a couple of years. So I remember when the two seniors, when I was a freshman went, and I just remember thinking, oh, I, I want to get that experience. I want to be able to do that game. 
And then uh, sophomore year, we, they didn't have it. My junior year, they didn't have it. This year, my senior year, they finally did it for the first time in three years and the second time ever. And obviously, I I um did that game. I've done play-by-play -play for basketball for this is my first year as a full-time play-by-play guy for basketball because last year we had a senior do it. So I rotated between the studio producer and color commentator outside of uh, about two times. But I took on the basketball play-by-play -play this year, and we got to go to St. John's, UConn, and uh, so it's been a tremendous experience working LIU basketball this year. It's awesome. All right. Yeah. Enough with the interview now. Now we're going to go to what you signed up for. We're going to talk about the NFL playoff games this weekend. Let's start off with the Giants. They just got the Moss against the Eagles. You know, they ran, the Eagles ran over them. Uh, Goddard's looking like uh, TJ Hawkinson out there. They just can't g guard the tight end over there. And James Bradbury, he came to play. He's like, I'm on a mission. You guys cut me. I'm going to prove to myself. He play, He also played his tail off. Boston Scott, the Giants killer, he scored a touchdown. And uh, there was an interception. Daniel Jones, I saw, I saw like, playing some turnovers. He overthrew R Richie James a couple of times, so... And so it was very, it was very slack with the Giants, and the Eagles just took over, took over the, from the turnovers. Yeah, I mean, um, by far, I think it was by far the best um, division in the NFL. So the fact that the Giants were able to go above five hundred with the competition they had against them week in and week out, and then um, shut down the Vikings, who had a tremendous season. It showed that they're definitely a young team with potential, but so are the Eagles as well. And the Cowboys aren't really going anywhere. The Cowboys are going to be that team who every year, well, we'll talk about them after, but they're just going to be that team every year that they, they're always very good, but they can never finish it off. And similarly to the Dodgers outside of the COVID season, it's just what they do. You know, they're going to be good, but they're going to, they're going to have something. They're going to have one bad performance that just ends their season, but they're always going to be in that mix. And so it, it's going to be a very good battle for years to come, but it showed the Eagles were more ready, prepared. And they were the team that's been building for longer to get to where they want to be, which is now, but the giants are, they're not going anywhere either. Daniel Jones had the best season of his career. He had the, one, the best game of his career in his first playoff start. And so um, it was beginner's luck, but then also like beginner's unluck as he was definitely, he's definitely better than he played in, against the Eagles, but he's not as as he played against the Vikings. So I think it all evens out in the end, but I think the Giants, they got further than where they were planning to go and you can't down pass their season as anything but extraordinary. Yeah, for sure. They mentioned the Cowboy. Let's, let's, let's get your take. On, let's get your take on that. Let's see what you got to say about that game. But how about them Cowboys? <laughs> Stephen A. Smith had the shirt and tie ready to go in his own house to make that video as soon as the game was over. Yeah, two interceptions, back press, guy. Like, I always say this, you got to be perfect. And they're not perfect. People always make mistakes, but great teams capitalize on your mistakes. So they got the two turnovers. The small 49ers scored right away. It was, it was kind of a field goal fast towards the McCaffrey touchdown, but it was... Uh, pretty much close the whole game. The Cowboys could have came back, couldn't come really couldn't come back. So I was I, I was. I thought the Cowboys would pull it off, but it just didn't work out. And my and crack congrats to Maher. He finally got the two field goals. He met he missed he missed last week all, all the field Five goals. Five straight kicks. Got it. Yeah. yeah, I mean uh it you can always laugh at Mar Marer for missing all those point afters, but it, it that wasn't it didn't make a difference in their season. They they just played a bad game. They um it was a defensive battle. It very easily could have been an offensive battle. Dak Prescott and Zeke are both amazing players, and Brock Purdy's been the best quarterback in football since his first career start since he took over. And I kind of had a feeling that it was kind of be we were going to see some sort of a reality check for Brock Purdy, but he was going to figure out a way to make it count and get come away with the victory. I I didn't uh my my mentality going into that game was. Brock Purdy's not going to be a superstar, but he's going to do the bare minimum to win. He's going to have his rough edges because he's going to start showing that once you start playing really good defenses, that mistakes are going to happen. But um, I knew once that fourth quarter came around, once towards the end, that he was going to pull through because he knows what it takes to win. He hasn't lost a game in the NFL yet, 
And um, similarly to just Trevor Lawrence back when he was in college, he just found ways to win, even if he wasn't on his best game, even if you thought um, his expect and because expectations were so high, you can't expect it every time. But uh, I think it's going to be a terrific battle between the 49ers and the Eagles in the NFC Championship. They're both very similar style organizations right now in that sense of um, familiar coaches, but young players. And it's all depending on how that leadership comes upon from both sides and how the heads match together. To this Brock Purdy reminds me of Matt Saracen. Matt Saracen was a third string quarterback. Nobody heard about him. We got Jason Street was the star quarterback, just like Trey Lance. Everyone was like, Trey Lance is the guy. Same as Jason Street. And then and then Voodoo came in. They got this guy Voodoo from the transfer portal, just like Garoppolis, average quarterback. And he was he really didn't play play that well. So they had to go with Saracen and and they had a great they won the championship that year. They won it had a great defense. Smash Williams was like an MVP guy, just like just like he was a short running back. For sure. He was running down the middle, great offensive yeah. line. Great defense. I know it's a TV show, but you know, this is it's a great competitor. And then George uh, George Kittle is very much the tight end. Yeah, I, I don't remember the I don't remember the tight end's name on that team, but I remember he was like a staple leader, kind of like yeah, yeah. And he was just kind of he he was just always the man. He was he was never the number one player on the field, but he always made an impact by doing something. Yeah, yeah. he was the one who dated the coach's daughter and um. After he became the starter, yeah, 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 yeah. See, you, you know, you know, you know, what you're talking about. You got, you got good taste. That show lasted five seasons. Obviously, the problem with those shows is like when you're, it was a high school team, and so obviously every year, whoever the best stars are, they're going to be gone if they're seniors. That's just the way the show would have to work, and that's why that show had a really good like first three seasons because a lot of the players on that first season were sophomores. And that was why they had to have that whole plot twist where the coach ended up getting fired, sent to the next district over school that came up from nothing, ended up doing well against the original school. But yeah, I, I like the plot twist, but it was never the same after like just the original content and the original like um, momentum, like guys in that show that made it worthwhile watching early on stick. And that's why it didn't last after the fifth season. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's go to, let's go to the, the Bengals Bills, everyone's favorite game of the weekend. It just didn't turn out that way. The Bengals won twenty-seven to ten. Josh Allen, I don't know what was what what was going on with him. I don't know. I don't. Know. I don't. It's just insane. I don't know how that happened. I've been saying since the beginning of the year, the best three teams in football were the Chiefs, the Bills, and the Bengals, all in the AFC. Whoever wins the AFC was most likely going to end up winning the Super Bowl. And all the best games were going to be between those three teams. We saw the Bengals beat the Chiefs. We saw the Bills beat the Chiefs. Chiefs yeah. destroyed everybody else. And then it was a way for them to play each other. And I would, and everyone wanted the Bills to put on a better showing, but the Bengals just showed that they can be the better team and prove that they're not this third seed behind the Bills and the Chiefs who got who happened to get lucky last year. They are a team to watch out for. And that quarterback trio. I don't think any of those three guys are going anywhere. Obviously, Mahomes isn't. He's in a long-term contract for the next 10 years. Only a matter of time before Burrow gets one. And then um, the three of them, are it, that's going to be a battle for the AFC for the next 10 years. I don't see any team outside of the three of them getting to the Super Bowl in the AFC. Yeah, I agree. Um, for many years to come. A lot of three and outs, and Bang just capital. It ran down the field, touchdown every time. Hurst with the touchdown, Chase with the touchdown. And you you can't ha- you can't punt even though they turn they only turn the ball over one time at the end you can't have those three and outs especially in the in the playoffs you have to capitalize when, once you have the ball and he was Josh Allen was talking to the other guy on the team like worry about your team worry just just and and just try to win the game you don't have to talk to anybody just focus that the task at hand and everything will take care for himself. I mean, another way that you can just praise the way this Bengals organization trusted Burrow to get them from nowhere to where they are now in just two to three year time frame, because he was the number one overall pick after winning the championship at LSU. Obviously, a lot of um, high expectations for him being the number one overall pick. He gets hurt his first year. The Bengals have an okay season, but 
Obvi- and then you have someone, Jamar Chase, who won the championship with him at LSU, had one more year left. He was obviously going to be a first-round pick, and the Bengals said drafted him fifth overall. I don't think any team would have drafted him that high, but it was Burrow said, I want him on my team. He knows how to win with me. We know how to work together, and we know how to win together. And they took a quarterback who had one okay season with signs of life with an injury to say, okay, we're going to use a second first-round pick on on someone of your choice, and that was two straight years that they went to either Burrow or his main guy, and the two of them have been lights out ever since, and it was the best combo one-two punch to draft from one year to the next ever. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, let's let's go. Let's go with the the last game, the Chief Chief Jaguars. This is this is how competitive onto the Giants to be. If they play like this, the way the Jaguars play, but like, all right, acceptable. You had a great season, but I can't say that if you got demolished by the by the Eagles, it's it's not gonna happen. So I thought the Jags played 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 well. Let's 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 talk about it. I just like being injured. Mahomes just doesn't um st- quit, doesn't stop. He's by far the most talented quarterback in the NFL right now. He can just do everything. Even when he's hurt, he just becomes a better pocket passer because now that's the only thing he's focused on. So instead of doing everything at 95%, now he's doing one thing at 100%. Similarly, like we saw Brady for 20 years. He's not the most talented guy in the sense of the the explosive plays that he has, but he knows how to read the defense. And it's not that Mahomes can't, but he doesn't get a lot of credit for that because everyone's wowed by the moves he makes when he's perfectly healthy. Yeah, I agree for sure. And it it was only... 17-20 Seventeen to twenty at one point. Once the ATN touchdown, I was like, "All right, I think they come back. I think something's gonna happen." But uh, ever since this the Scantling touchdown, Mahomes came back. He just took over, and that's what good players do. You know, they take over. They take over the game. The way that Mahomes is gonna have to play it um, this week, also because he's probably not gonna be at one hundred percent. He's not gonna be able to run like he usually would when he's under pressure. And so he um he's gonna have to take advantage of everything. And it's gonna be a good battle on the um corner side because Eli Apple, he had a tremendous game. Obviously, a lot of memes have been made about him over the years, but does he have another game in him to where he has to stop Mahomes and his receivers? Sure. All right, let's go to everyone's favorite round, the quick fire round. Are you ready? Let's do it. All right. Favorite cereal. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Nice. Favorite athlete of all time? Tough one because I, I watch so many different sports. But um, watching in, uh, Mariana Rivera, I would say. Definitely in terms of watching in my lifetime. Because uh, when I first got into baseball the way I am, as just a number one passion for it, he was always that guy who just closed it out game in and game out. And um, I'm glad I got to see part of, because even the end of his career was outstanding. He could have easily probably pitched another four to five years if he wanted to. So it was sad to see him go when he retired, but he was my favorite guy to watch as um, as a kid when I first got into it. It's a good choice. Our uh, favorite team of all time. Yankees. Nice, nice. And since since you're at the Yankees, you Brought the Yankees here. You worked at WFAN, you know that's a big radio station. Let's let. I was so excited that you got that job. It was it was awesome. I'm so proud of you. How, how'd you like it? How'd you get the job? You want to get into it? Yeah, thank you, man. It's um so obviously radio has always been one of the biggest passions of mine. Once I first um got into it when I was a senior in high school, but um. So I've been working through the college radio ladder since I started. Reach I've I've got I'm, I'm at the highest I can go. I'm the sports director at my campus radio station. I've had that position for two years now. Um, our old director he was he was also like a professor at the university. He ran the broadcasting major for people who majored in that. He retired last spring. The new guy who filled his position, um, he went to LIU about 15ish years ago when he graduated and um. He works at Odyssey for WFAN and CBS Sports Radio. His main position is he's the producer of the Damon and, De- and uh, Delora show, which is um, every weekday morning. So that's like his main job. But he also now runs the LIU station as a uh, part-time job. 
and it was only a couple months after I met him. Uh, he He's seen all the work I've done throughout football season. Uh, then at the end of football season, he goes, would you want to work at CBS? And I said, absolutely, because that's that's the next way up. I've already I've been doing a college for so long. I was ready to make that jump to the professional level. Obviously, I went from bottom to top. Now I have to do it again. But that's the way it is. When you move up to the next level, you're starting at the bottom again. So what I've been doing is um, tape off work stuff. It's pretty much just cutting highlights. I um, I, I haven't done any shifts for the WFAN side yet. It's all just been for CBS. So the main difference is that even though it's um, two stations, they both work in the same newsroom. The Odyssey building has many different newsrooms because there's um, there's a hip hop station. There's 10, 10 wins. But the one newsroom that has the CBS Sports Radio and WFAN. So my job is uh, to take the in-game highlights and like the post-game interview highlights and put them in the system. So the update guys and the producers can use them on their shows when they play the clips. So for CBS, it's whatever the biggest headlines are across the country because it's not a local station. It's whoever has that signal from um, any uh, pretty much any station across the country that has that flagship station would pick up whatever broadcasts we're putting on. So uh, my shifts are usually 7 p.m. to 3 a.m. because we have to wait till the uh, the West Coast games finish, and then we have to wait for post game to come out and all that. But um, for the fan, they may, they just focus on the New York Metropolitan teams. So Yankees, Mets, Jets, Giants, uh, Knicks, Rangers, Devils, or Islanders, Rangers, Devils, and Knicks and Nets. So it's it's um a little different because we just have, in terms of the fan, they're only worried about, in terms of what's happening in the MLB, how it relates to the Yankees and Mets. Because people that are listening to the fan are fans of one of those seven to eight teams, the actual New York team. So Whatever they talk about is in relevance to how it affects those teams. With C with the CBS network side, it's just whatever the biggest headlines are and what's happening. So obviously, when the Cowboys lost, that was something we had to focus on because there's a lot of Cowboys fans across the country. So it's a lot of getting whatever the biggest headlines are and then how it relates to the biggest market teams. Obviously, when the we have to talk about smaller market teams too, if they're part of the relevant circle, but obviously it affects. Our job is mainly to get whatever the biggest headlines are and figure out ways to piece the narratives together. Yes. That's awesome. I'm proud of you. Keep up the good work. Thank you, man. You did it before. I think you're definitely going to do it again. I, I believe in you. Thank you. So, yeah, so I believe uh, next month they're going to have me start working live shows, not on air yet, but they're going to have me um, oh. engineering, the, the, engineering the board. So that'll be like... Uh, running the commercial breaks and then um, any, anything that there's playing on the air, whatever you hear would be coming from my, the the buttons I press. Yes. All right. Since you're a broadcaster, I want to, I hear a, a George nickname. Can you do a nickname? Like a George nickname. Like if I score a basket or score a touchdown, you're like, do I don't want to put you on the spot, but can you do it for me? Um, uh, next time I'll have it prepared. <laughs> I'll, I'll do one for every sport. I'll have one prepared for every sport. Uh, I'll make a call for. Yep, right. you, you have my word on that one. Right. Sounds good. All right, we're gonna go with the uh, favorite TV show. I'm trying to think. I don't want. I I, ma I mainly just watch sports, but um, the Friday Night Lights one was really good that you mentioned it. But uh, I I wouldn't say that's my favorite. Oh oh, South Park. I'm going South Park. Nice, nice. Because like I, the problem is, it's like it's not that I don't have patience for, but, but when I get into all the trendy shows, it's like I'll watch a few episodes, but I'll never end up finishing it, and so that's why I don't like starting them because I don't want to have that cliffhanger hang over me. But then I also just don't have like the willpower to just fo follow it and watch it every time. That's why shows that have been on like ten plus seasons, if someone tells me to get into it, I I don't even bother. But like a, a difference would be like the show Shorzy on Hulu. That show, if do you know what I'm talking about or no? Yeah, yeah. Good... That show's absolutely hilarious. Only six episodes. So when I found that out, I watched the whole series. Nice. And awesome. if a season two comes out, I'm definitely gonna watch it because it'll it'll be six to ten episodes, and I know I'm I'm not so far behind, and it's gonna be something I could bang out in a day. So, favorite commercial. Uh the only thing stuck in my head right now is the Whopper Junior. Yes. Get it, have it your way. <laughs> That's the only, just because of its relevancy right now. I just think it sticks out. Everyone's talking about it. Nice. And you go to everyone's favorite question. Who's your celebrity crush? Kayla Demeter. I heard the name, yeah, but 
She's a, she's a Canadian ice hockey goalie turn model. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah, so uh, I, I, I haven't shot my shot yet. Uh, how, how did that how did that end up happening? You just watched Pocky one time, you saw her, and that's how. No, happened. I think I just I no, I found her on Instagram. I think. Oh, nice! That's awesome. She probably I think she commented under some NHL post, and I saw the check mark. Went to the page, and the rest is history. <laughs> you you've probably said it on the show, but I don't think I know. It's Faith Faith Hill Sunday Night Football. Yeah. Uh, what? Wh- any, wrapping off the show, Andrew, is there anything you want to say? Keeps going all the way. <laughs> and once Kevin Durant comes back, I think the Nets make uh I think the Nets finally pull through and win it. I see. Yeah, I think so too. Where can people find you? Mention Instagram. What's your Instagram handle? It's uh A Scarpacci1750. Anyone who wants to take a screenshot, it is there. I got all my other tags for um, everything else I'm a part of. So the, the LIU Sports Radio page, the um, the Tide newspaper, which I'm sports editor of. Yeah, for sure. Links in the description. Go follow my man, Andrew. And I'll uh, see you in a splash. <laughs>